Hello, my name is Edward and I'm a very handsome fish eagle. I live in the north of Botswana near the Chobe River, which is in southern Africa. Today I'm going to tell you all about my African friends who live here and about some of the humans who are always around here trying to get pictures of me and my friends. We do try to hide from them, but they still find us. They attach things to their eyes, which I understand makes us all look bigger. I am the lookout for my animal friends, as I have the best view of the bush and the river, and I can let them know when the humans are coming. It was a hot day in early November in Botswana. We were supposed to have had rain by now, but the sky is still very blue and the sun very hot and there were no clouds at all. Some of my larger elephant friends, who lived many miles away, were travelling up to my river so that they could get some water. So it was quite a busy time on the Chobe River. It was also a very busy time for the humans to come as well. It's as if they knew that we were all going to be there at this time. I had to look out for everyone. It was a difficult job with lots of responsibility. The thing is, my friends were all very different and unfortunately some of my friends, like Leonard the Leopard and Larry the Lion and Chester and Charlie the Cheetah Brothers, liked to eat some of my other friends, like Zoe the Zebra, Walter the Wildebeest and Wendy the Warthog, which isn't very sociable of them, is it? Zoe and Walter normally hang around with loads of other zebras and wildebeest. Wendy is normally with another female friend and their babies, and they normally have a male warthog who protects them all. Being in big groups sometimes makes it tricky for my big cat friends to catch them. I cannot help feeling a bit pleased when I see them escape. As I said, having such a variety of friends can be tricky. One of my friends, well I say friends, we really just tolerate each other as we share the same hunting area, is Cranky. Cranky is a Nile crocodile. Everyone calls him that because he's very snappy. Sometimes he looks like he's asleep on the bank with his mouth wide open and then suddenly he will turn round and grab something to eat and snap his mouth shut and dive underwater. Cranky doesn't have many friends as he is just as his name suggests, Cranky. I get my food during the day and I rest in the trees at night. I mainly like to eat fish but I will catch and eat snakes and when the baby crocodiles start to hatch they make quite a tasty snack. I have to keep an eye out that Cranky is not around though. I catch my food myself, but if needed, I will steal it from other birds. They do not normally look very impressed when I do this. I cannot think why. The African bush can be a noisy place during the night, especially around the marshland near me. One of the noisiest of my friends is Bolshi, the African bullfrog. It's around the start of the rainy season that Bolshi and thousands of his friends start looking for partners to have babies with. They make the most terrific noise about it as well. There's no peace. It is just before the sun goes down each day that the humans appear on many boats. With their big cameras, they come to look at us and watch the sunset. They normally see lots of us around this time. Not so many of my big cat friends as they wait until later at night or before everyone else wakes up in the morning to come for a drink. But all my vegetarian friends are at or in the river at this time. Harriet and Harry and their pod of hippos are here most of the time. They have to stay in the water a lot until the sun goes down, as they have very sensitive skin that can burn easily. Eli, the bull elephant, who is always on his own, is usually having a quick bath or a drink. On the other side of the riverbank, which is actually a different country, because I can see three countries from my tree, my home country of Botswana, the other side of the river is Zambia, and next to me there is Zimbabwe. It's fine though, we all communicate in the same language. It is on the Zambian side of the river that Ella, the elephant, usually hangs out. She is the mum of the herd. The proper word for this is matriarch. It is quite a big herd with other female relatives and all their babies. The humans love to watch the elephants. I think it's because they stay in a family. Also I have heard that elephants have similar feelings to humans. Sometimes they feel sad, angry and happy, just like you do. There are also many impala that hang around the river. My friend is Imogen. Impala tend to stick together in quite large groups and avoid Cranky and his chums wherever possible. If the humans are really lucky, sometimes they will see Gerald, who is my very tall friend with big eyelashes. He is a giraffe and has a very long way to bend down to get his drink. He has just made friends with Greta. All the humans love to see giraffe. I have seen Gerald kick Larry the lion before. 
Larry thought about trying to take a nibble from Gerald's leg, but Gerald was not having any of that, and with a swift kick later, Larry was gone. Gerald may look very gentle, but he has very strong legs and can actually run quite fast. Larry is a very large lion with a huge fluffy mane. You may have heard lions called kings of the jungle before. He is very fierce. But Larry has just become a daddy. The humans were very lucky last week when they were on an early morning game drive with Ranger Steve and they saw his new babies wandering around the bush with their mummy. I watched the game vehicle follow them for ages. The humans love to see new babies. It does not matter which one of my friends has them. A much rarer sighting for the humans is Ronnie. He is a white rhino. He has to learn to be very careful about making public appearances though, as some very, very bad humans like to try and cut off his precious horn. Many of his kind have been killed all over Africa. My country is one of the safest ones to be in, as the people that run the country have been very strict about protecting Ronnie and all of the other animals. After the sun goes down and the humans have gone back to their lodges, Many of my friends leave the river to get their dinner. Harriet and Harry like grass and lots of it. In fact, they spend most of the night munching on grass. The humans in the lodges have to be very careful if they are wandering around at night. Harriet and Harry do not like to be disturbed while they are having their dinner. It is usually at night that the big cats look for their dinner as well. They have very good eyes and can see in the dark much better than humans. They like to catch my vegetarian friends mainly. I have to share my tree sometimes with a troop of vervet monkeys. Vernon is the leader of the troop. They are very mischievous and love to jump around all over the roofs of the lodges where the humans are. They also like putting on acrobatic shows for the humans. They swing in the trees and do very big jumps from one tree to another. Sometimes they even steal the humans food from the restaurant. The staff are always shooing them away, but they are very clever and they know the human guests think they are very funny. One of my large bird friends is Mandy. She's a marabou stork. She's often on the riverbanks or wading around fishing. She's a bit less fussy than I am and she will eat frogs, worms and insects. She does wash them off sometimes before she eats them. Mandy has no feathers on her head at all, a bit like some of the human men. The humans like to see her even though she's not the most attractive of birds. I mean, most of us adult birds are beautiful, especially the boys, even if I say so myself. There are some of my friends that although the humans like to see them, they do not want to get too close to them. In particular, Mario the snake, who is a black mamba. He is very dangerous, and one bite from him can be fatal to humans. He likes the trees as well, but he's just as happy on the ground. Mario can get very long. He's almost as long as two adult humans. He is not actually black at all, he is grey, but when he opens his mouth to bite, the inside of his mouth is pitch black, which is where he gets his name from. Another not so popular friend is Patricia the Python. She's a snake as well. She doesn't bite people, but is very long and has much bigger body than Mario, especially if she has just had her dinner. Patricia wraps herself around her prey before she eats them, a bit like a very tight hug. She likes to eat small buck and other small mammals, and sometimes she quite likes to eat a monkey. Vernon and his gang have to be on the lookout. It is very common everywhere in Africa to see baboons. They are just as playful as vervet and equally clever. They also have a male leader of the troop. The leader of my troop is Bertie. He has about 25 other baboons in his troop, girls, boys and some small babies. There is a couple of my friends that I haven't told you about yet. Bailey is a female Cape buffalo. Buffaloes have curly horns, which make them look like they've just been to the hairdressers. They are very large indeed, and not many of my big cat friends tried to catch Bailey. Bailey is the head of the herd of about 30 other females, and they're young ones. She doesn't normally stray too far from the water. Many years ago, there were five animals that humans wanted to hunt. These were called the Big Five, and they are lion, buffalo, rhino, leopard and elephant. The humans now just like to be able to tell their friends that they have seen the big five and taken a photo of them when they come back from their holidays. I know a group of humans that have been to my country quite a few times now. I have seen them on the boat on my river and in a game vehicle and I've heard a whisper that they have been all over Africa and have only just seen a leopard. 
I know that people don't always see them. Leonard likes to hide up in the trees and the bushes and doesn't like being seen. He's very secretive. When any of my cat friends catch their dinner, they do not always eat every bit, a bit like some humans. This is when Velda the vulture and all her flock come in. They sit waiting very patiently for the big cats to leave so they can come in and finish off what is left. Velda never catches her own food and just cleans up after what other animals have left behind or what they find on the roads. This is very good for everyone as they can stop some nasty diseases spreading to other animals and humans. Many more animals live with me in Botswana, although I'm not acquainted with all of them, of course. Maybe when you're older you can come and see us all for yourself. I hope you little humans have had fun hearing about me and my friends. In my next story, I'll tell you a little bit more about each of my friends. Cranky is going to be first. Something that I have heard around the bush and I think you should know about. We should only take photographs and only leave footprints. Ask an adult what this means, but if all you small humans learn this and tell your friends and other adult humans, there will still be lots of animals left for you to see when you grow up.